All right, this is going to be Atlas's 28th session, his second session in the round pen. So I'm just trying to get his attention here, have him face up. He wants to kind of be distracted and just eat some grass. But the first thing I want to do is work on hit, drawing him towards me. So again, here's just distracted, wants to eat some grass. Again, I think this is it's just some stress eating. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put some forward movement, ask for some forward movement, and then draw him toward me. So I picked up that white whip in my right hand and kind of push his hind end away. And then once he goes forward, I'm going to try to catch that and back up. He turned around the other way. That's fine. But see, I'm still trying to catch that. So he's going forward. I'm going to step in front of the drive line, which is in front of his shoulder. And there he steps inward toward me. He goes the other way. That's fine. I'm just going to follow him and then try and catch him again, catch his eye. And then back up as soon as I can do that. And he just kind of wants to go back and forth here on um, the gates right there. That's where he lives is off to the right. So he wants to kind of stay in that area. So that's why he's kind of pacing, not pacing, but he'll turn and go back the other way. Because that's where he thinks is going to be safest. So I'm just going to work on like driving and drawing. So you need some forward movement in order to draw. This was much, that was pretty good. That was really nice. He draw, drew pretty well that time. Came all the way up before I was just getting like that one step or two. So I'm just going to rub on him here for a second. And he, there he's giving me a calming signal. He's kind of working his way down. And then he got a little worried and wanted to trot off toward the gate. That's fine. I'm not going to punish him. I'm just going to ask him to go forward here with that white whip. And then again, a step in front of him. And there we have that inside turn and a couple of steps to draw. I'm just trying to draw that forward energy toward me. It's going to be really hard to draw your horse toward you if he's going one mile an hour. If he's stopped, obviously he's not going to turn into you. So it's much easier when you have some forward momentum to help you. And see, so he kind of wants to trot off on his own. Um, I'm not asking him to do that. But I do want the forward, and then he's just giving me that trot. So you can show that he's a little bit worried because he is going into it without me asking. And then he is, um, like, stress eating. He's trying to kind of calm himself down, and he's just grazing quickly. That's another calming signal. He's trying to come down from a little bit of worry there. And I'll let him graze a little bit, but um, not as much as, long, as the further we go along. So next I'm going to yield the hindquarters. That was decent. He didn't cross over, but he moved his hind end over. And I'd like him to pick up his head, too, and, like, actually look at me. But um, I'm going to allow him to, to graze a bit because I know he's worried. There he faced up. He didn't yield his hindquarters, but he did face up. Again, he's just moving his front end. So I'm just going to keep arcing around here and try and ask him for that hindquarters. He's a little worried about the stick, so I'm just going to let him touch it. Like, not a big deal. You can touch it. It won't hurt you. And then I'm just going to arc around here. He wants to leave. That's okay. I'm just going to kind of follow here, I'm trying to stay in position here and just wait for him to kind of roll around right there and I'll release. I'll stand up straight and back up. So that was decent. So he wanted to leave and that's totally fine. I'm not going to chase him or make him feel bad. I'm going to try and keep asking him. So since he left at a slow p p pace, I could go with him and continue to ask. So if he just ran off, I'm just going to ask again. So I'll get him faced up and then ask again. So if he's just going to run off, then there's no sense in um, continuing to ask because you're not going to be able to keep up with him. So I'm going to let him just kind of take a minute here. Um, he did what I asked, so he gets a little break and he can graze a minute. And I'll ask the other side. So he, there he's stepping across. That's very nice. And he's looking at me. So he thought about, oh, I'm just going to go over here, off to the left here. And then he decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to face you and, and yield my hindquarters. So that was really nice. And then we're just going to go to the other side. There we go. Nice crossover. So he's doing it really nice. And he's like, ah, I think I want to leave. So I'm just going to put a little pressure on him. I'm not chasing him. I just want to be like, okay, if you want to leave, I'm just going to kind of put a little pressure on you. And then when he spaces me up, then he won't have any pressure on him. So we'll just let him sit here for a second. So I don't love that he's by the gate, but it's fine because I just want him to have a place where he can look at me and, and get that reward. So um, as we go, I'm going to try and not have it by the gate. So I'm using my white whip to block his face and my black one to yield his hindquarters. So I really had to block him there and then he drew in and came over toward me. So again, my black whip's in my left hand. I'm trying to block his, for, his um, forward movement and use that white whip in my right hand to push his hindquarters over. There he's kind of going, but he's there's a step over. I'll take that. But he's just kind of like, ah, ah. Like he's kind of avoiding it without the full-on leaving he's just trying to kind of ignore me and and not do what I'm asking here and that's just because he's a little worried there he's looking and stepping across that's decent it wasn't a complete hindquarter yield but um he was 
moving and stepping across. We'll take that. I'll let him hang out. He's again, rubbing his head on his leg. He's eating grass. He's a little worried about this. So I just put a little pressure on him to ask him to move over. And he's like, ah, no, I'm gonna leave and runs over to that side of the um, round pen. Cause that's where he lives. Have him do that inside turn. Not a big deal. I'm not super worried if he wants to trot around. I'm just going to try and draw him back in. That was decent. And let him have a minute just facing me. I really want to keep like reassuring him that if he faces me, he's going to get a nice little break and he can just hang out. But he's not quite convinced yet. That was a nice step over. I'll lower my whips and just let him stand there for a second. Again, he's over by the gate, but I'm kind of using the magnet of the gate to my advantage here. I'm allowing him to stop there and show him where the rest is. Um, and then eventually throughout the series, you'll see that he'll stop um, opposite the gate and other places in the round pen. So again, I stepped in front, asked him to draw toward me. He does. He turns and faces and stops. And then I'm going to I'm gonna ask him to, I'm trying to get him to draw toward me here. And he's just ignoring. But there we go. So I'll lower my whips back up. He really rather leave instead of um, kind of connect with me here. He's thinking of the pressure as run away versus solve a puzzle. So we're trying to fix that. This is nice. So I'll let him hang out here. So now I want him to draw a little bit toward me here. So I'm going to use my longer lunge whip that's in my left hand, the white one, to kind of use or kind of create movement behind him to have him draw closer to me. So he thought that was just going to mean run around the round pen. So I'm like, no, that's not exactly what I want. And so I'm trying to back up while kind of pushing on his hip there. There we go. It gets a couple of forward movements. So um, as soon as he steps forward, I'm going to back up and I'm going to let him sit here. And so this is nice because he's looking at me. He's not grazing. So he can just kind of focus on me here. So change whips. So I kind of try to keep that longer whip on the inside to push his hindquarters over in the circle. Um, the black whip in my left hand is a driving whip and it's probably half as long as the lunge whip with the lash. So, um, it just helps if you're on a circle to have it on the inside, you can really push the horse forward and create a little bit more energy behind him, like toward this hindquarters to get him to go forward. It's going to be harder with a driving whip, but I like having one of each length because it really helps if I need to I push the shoulders or have something that's a little less scary with a shorter lash that the driving whip has versus a lunge whip. So I like to have one of each, but then you do have to change hands sometimes, but it's not a big deal. So again, I'm creating energy with that white whip in my right hand, and then he decides to leave. So I'm kind of blocking him with my black whip. There he comes in. I'm going to lean back. I'm just showing him this is the answer. I'm going to draw him toward me. So it's kind of like a jump for the first time when you put those wings up on the cross rail to kind of get him to go in. That's what a cross rail is too, is to show him the answer. That's what my whips are doing right now. So he is calming down a little bit. Um, him just kind of itching himself. He's licking his lips instead of just staring at me or deciding to run away. So there, he's arcing. So that's nice. So he's going forward and drawing toward me. So we'll take that. And I'm just trying to kind of go... Um, I'm going to have him touch it here because he's worried about the whips. And I'm going to do the opposite. So if he's like, oh, this whip is scaring me. I think I should leave. I'm like, oh, we'll do some desensitizing instead. So it does help to make like an arc versus just walk straight back because it untracks the hind end and, and gets them moving forward a bit more. I could just walk straight back and he'll, he'll probably just stand there. So that's why I'm arcing around when I'm asking for that draw. So he's looking over there to his friends and he's just, he's a little worried, but he's, he is better than when we started. So he's staying away from the gate here and just having a minute, um, without running off. So that's good. And he's not stress grazing either. Yeah. And he's a little bit slower at his demeanor and his ears are a bit slower. So that's nice. Lower his neck a little bit there. And that's what the desensitizing is doing. So I need to have a balance there where I'm asking him to do things with my whips, but not with him being scared. So I'm asking him to do things, but then I'm balancing out with the desensitizing. Show him the, the whips are not there for whipping. They're just there to put push energy towards you and move you a little bit. So that's why I'm always having that balance between the desensitizing and the sensitizing. So he decides to leave here. That's fine. So I'm going to ask him... There he comes in. So I just, I didn't switch hands, but I used my whip in my right hand over to the left to kind of push on those hindquarters there. And there he draws toward me. 
So I could also switch hands and do that too. So there's a nice calming signal. He's kind of rubbing his face on his leg, trying to graze again. He's just trying to calm down because he's a little worried. So I'm going to draw him again, push, create some energy and into those whips um, to draw him toward me. So he comes off the rail. So he's definitely getting better with coming off the rail and facing up to me, but still not perfect. So I walk toward him and he's like, okay, I'm gone. Bye. So we're going to have to work on that a bit. So I'm just going to say, no, like it's not scary. I'm just going to let him sniff the whip a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm kind of just experimenting here. Um, it could definitely be helped by adding in some positive reinforcement here, but I kind of wanted to play with having positive reinforcement and not having it, mixing it together, see what I like. So that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm not using any at the moment, but um, from what I found with the rest of the training sessions, I definitely would add it in at this point, um, especially for this horse. Because he, um, Atlas is a little bit more worried. He's not terrified of everything. He just has a bit more worried um, tendencies than the other horses do. And he's young. He's um, He was obviously uh, wild at one point. So um, those are totally fine. We're not going to punish him for being afraid. But um, he just needs a little bit more encouragement. And he needs to go a little bit slower than the other horses. So I'm just letting him hang out here. So he's not grazing. He's just kind of focused on me. But he's not shut down because he's got his ears moving and he's looking. So that's good. A lot of Mustangs can get shut down because there's just so much going on. Um, and they don't know the right answer. And then they just kind of dull. Uh, and they, they just kind of, they'll go around along with stuff, but they're not completely there. And I definitely don't want them to become shut down. So I want to pay attention that he's not, if his ears aren't moving and he's not looking around, he's just kind of standing there or like forced relaxation. He'll just stand there and, and he just, he looks tight, but he's just waiting for me to go away. Um, none of those things are good. So I'm just breaking out a little bit of desensitizing because he wants to kind of run away from the whip. It's obviously cold too and windy, so that's not helping. But um, So I'm desensitizing here to create a little bit more draw toward me. So again, with the balancing thing, um, the desensitizing adds confidence and relaxation. And the sensitizing, I'm going to need just to have him move around to be a riding horse. So I'm asking him to do things. That's going to get rid of the pushiness and things like that. Atlas really doesn't have a lot of pushiness, um, so I don't need to do that as much. That's why I need to be a lot softer with him um, and asking him to move, so he needs more desensitizing. So you can see over the next couple of minutes here, well, well, as I desensitize him, he comes in toward me. So he's more interested, he's more relaxed, because I'm showing him, like, it's okay. Like, I can touch you with the whip, and it's not a big deal. And he's kind of doing this on his own, so I've kind of just figured this out with him um so I rub him with the stick I'll back up and he kind of just kind of scoots in all, all on his own so I'm like all right that's good because we're trying to work on draw anyway there he has a nice head shake he's gonna lip, lick his lips so I'll just hang out there and let him relax that's great because he's um lowered his neck and he's having that lick and chew while he's looking at me there he's gonna rub his face and then he's going back into grazing mode because you can tell as he goes through the calming signals there he comes up more that he's going back down into grazing mode. So when he started off this clip, when I have the text on the screen where he's um, desensitizing um, to create the draw, he had his neck up and then he shook his neck. So that was his first calming signal. And then he lowered his neck down, then he licked his lips, then he rubbed his head, and then he goes back to the grass. So that's like his series of calming signals to go from worried to calm again. And then those calming signals can also go the other way, but in this case, he was going from a little worried to calmer. So it's important to, to point out, and they're very interesting too. So I'm just letting him sniff my hand, relax a little bit. We're just bonding, we're just hanging out. And Atlas needs a lot of this. He needs um, some confidence and um, just somebody he can trust. And definitely since I've been doing obstacles with him, this is an older video and I'm voicing it over later, um, if I put him in the round pen with like an, a ball or something, he'll be like, no, it's not there. Um, but if I go in there, he'll, he'll then he'll come up and engage with it. So he needs like some someone to be in there and um, gain confidence from. So that's cool. Here he's just investigating me. He's just sniffing my hand, licking my hand. And I'm going to let him do that. I'm totally fine with that. I want him to be curious and interested and stuff like that. Um if he was going to try to bite me, I'm going to keep my hand really, really flat 
and like almost bend my fingers back a little bit. So I got that from uh, Warwick Schiller also. He's an amazing trainer. Um, he lets the horse kind of nibble on him and, and lick on him as long as he's investigating, not being dominant, not being aggressive, just kind of licking and doing a little nibbling, then I'll allow him to do that. Um, if he were to do um, like actually try to bite or something, I'm just going to make some noise with my other hand and just so he has some more of some kind of consequence. So it's just something not so fun happens when he does that. Um, I'm not gonna chase him or attack him or anything. Obviously, if he were to to charge or do something like that, that would be a different story. But if he's just kind of exploring and nips you, then I'm just gonna make some noise to make that uncomfortable for him. But if it was more aggressive than that, then yes, I'm gonna send him away. But Atlas has not done that at all, and all of that is just from fear too. So. If you do have a horse that's doing that, obviously you send them out of your space. Um, it's very dangerous, but you got to know where that is coming from too. Usually that horse has been pushed too far and that's what they're resorting to. So, but that's beside the point. So, um, Atlas is just being really good here. He's really calming down and letting me touch him with the whips. So we're just kind of taking a minute to hang out, balance him out mentally. Um, just give him some time to, to hang out here. And horses need these pauses too. Um, it's really good for them to just hang out and then completely just relax. Um, some horses are always doing things and they never come all the way down from their worry. And instead their worry builds on itself. And then it explodes in a buck or a bolt or a rear or whatever bad behavior you don't want. So it's really important just to have your horse hang out. Just let them have a breather and relax. And I think it can be hard for some people who are really extroverted or like um, type A personalities. They need to do something constantly um, to kind of connect with the horse. Because I don't think horses are more like that. They need to just kind of process things relax, hang out. And I'm definitely more the introverted type B. I'm like, okay, we did something, we'll hang out. And I'm just kind of wait and give them time. So, and I also, if I have a lot of things to do, then I just feel overwhelmed and shut down. I feel like the horses do too. So if I give them one task that they can complete um, and then rest, I feel like they do a bit better. There, he got a little worried and he decided, oh, maybe I want to leave. I'm like, no, just remember, I go back to the targeting. So I allow him to touch it with his nose and then I'll go back to touching him with it. But I'm just going to let him explore it here for a minute. Make sure he thinks it's okay. There we go. I don't know um, exactly why he was a little worried there. That's all right. Um, he could have heard something. Could have been the wind. Could have been a mixture. Like I was saying, I'm trying to get him to relax. But if he was a little worried about the whip. And then it's a little cold out. So he's a little worried anyways. And then the wind blows and the dog barks, then he's like, oh my gosh, I need to move. So it kind of builds on itself. So that's why I want to get rid of all that anxiety. So he's thinking about leaving. He's like, ah, oh, I want to kind of go over here toward the gate, toward where he lives. So I'm just going to ask him to draw back toward me. That was decent. He's really rubbing on his leg there. Um, I don't think there's any bugs out. It's quite windy. So that's just another calming signal. And he's going to lick his lips here. He's just trying to get rid of that stress. So he was a little worried there with that situation with the lunge line. So you could see it build up there. He moved. He investigated it. He tried to, like, calm himself down. And he just had to leave. And then when he came back, he's like, okay, I'm okay. I can leave if I have to. And he's kind of, kind of um, relaxing himself there. He's using that calming signal. So I'm going to create that movement here. He's going to do some grazing over here. That's all right. So I'm just going to ask him to go forward gently and then catch that energy and, and back up and try and draw him toward me. And then he only wants to take that step or two. That's why I'm asking here more with my stick. I'm just asking, can you take some more steps? Can you draw more toward me? That's what I really want to work on because he'll, he'll turn and do that inside turn nicely and then just take a step or two and then he's still out there. I really want him to drive and be a couple strides away from me so I can work on the steering and stuff and he just doesn't want to draw up that much. So go back, see if he'll kind of touch the whip a little bit and, and desensitize him on that left side there. I do the same thing I did on the right side.
Again, he's worried that there was a gust of wind at the same time, and he had the rope on the his side, and the other horses are trotting around in the background, so he thinks that he needs to back up, and he's a little worried. That's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to keep working with them, stay nice and calm. Because I'm always approaching retreating here, so I'm kind of starting on his neck, rowing his down his belly, and then when he's relaxed, I'll back up. And he's still a little worried there, but I'm just going to yield his hindquarters. You're like, nope, not a big deal. You can leave and move your feet, but I'd like your attention over here. There, he's looking at you and um, shake his head. I'm just going to make friends with him, pet on him a little bit. And then go back to the desensitizing with the whip. Okay, so ask for the hindquarters over. Good. He draws toward me a little bit. But as soon as you can see, as soon as he go, if I go to ask him to do something with the whips, he wants to just graze and kind of ignore me a little bit. He doesn't know how to deal with the pressure super well yet. But as soon as I go to desensitize, he can just kind of stand there and, and he's okay with it. So it's interesting to see the difference. So I'm just going to approach the retreat again, start on his neck, work my way back. And then when he's relaxed, I'm going to just stop desensitizing, take a step back and let him hang out for a second. Lots of approach from retreat. And there's a nice lick and chew again. I had to speed this part up too because it was making my video very, very long. So if I look like I'm going kind of fast, that's why. <laughs> but it's the same desensitizing that I always do. I just didn't want a very long video with me just desensitizing in it. And there he draws in just like we did before on the other side where he's building confidence with that desensitizing and then he's drawing in on his own. So I like that. Getting another lick in too. That was really nice. See, so yeah, I start on his head, work my way down his neck and then retreat and approach, work my way on his face, work my way down his neck, down toward his shoulders. There he's a little worried right there. I'm mean, like, that's okay, you can move. <laughs> he scared himself on his own. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ask him to draw back in again. I'm not gonna chase him or anything. I'm like, that's fine. I'm just come back over here. And he's not quite sure he'll draw. Then he's like, oh no, I think I'm gonna leave over here. So I'm just gonna ask him to, I'm just putting that forward motion in to capture it right there and have him come toward me. So he got a little worried and wanted to trot away, but I'm going to use that to work on the draw because now he's got some more forward. And there, that's some nice draw right there. And so you can see how I'm going sideways and backwards or side to side instead of just straight back because I'm trying to get that draw. It's just like when you, um, the horse doesn't want to lead forward, going side to side unsticks those feet. So that was really nice there actually. So he had that mo momentum for the trot and that energy to go forward and like really draw close toward me. So that was actually the best draw he's had. I don't love that he was worried, but I do like the draw that it ended up producing. So I think when it gets worried again, that's okay. Um, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna ask him to go forward and then there he goes, a nice inside turn. Create that movement here. I'm just asking him for forward movement. Good, yeah, that was good. So he drew he drew right in at that time instead of he could have easily like left to the left and just trotted off around the round pen, but he didn't. He came forward and off the rail, so that was pretty cool. So again, work on that desensitizing, approach and retreat here. So I'm just approaching, I'm waiting for that relaxation. And then, like, if he licks his lips, blinks his eye, which is what I'm usually looking for, lowers his head a bit, then I'll stop and I'll back up. If the horse is really worried, um, then I'm going to stop before I get to that point. So if he's really got his head up and I, as I go to him, he's like, oh, no, this is scary, then I'll stop. I'll back up. I'll be like, all right, that's okay, and then we'll try again. Um, he's not really doing that this much um, at this point. So when I go up there, he's fine, and then he gets worried as the stick's already on him. But he's not showing... A ton of worry as soon as I get up to him so that means he's okay with the approach he just gets worried once the sticks on him so again we're just working on that approach and retreat here so that means I'm just teaching him here like the stick can touch you it's not a big deal you can leave if you need to and it just helps build their confidence and they feel that they're not trapped I'm not gonna force you to be here because as soon as I start forcing them to be there then they're like oh crap like I have no way out and that's when you get the fight I'd much rather have the flight. I'd much rather he leave and, and tell me 
you know, this is, I'm afraid and I left at this point and this is what scared me versus he's going to fight and we're both going to get in trouble there. So I'd rather have that. So like here, he's a little worried. He decides to leave. Great. So now I know like he's afraid of the whip touching him on the belly. He's not great with that. And like, that's fine. He feels the need to leave, but I can also draw him back in and work on it again. So it's not a big deal. And eventually he'll learn that that's not very fun. It's much easier to just stand here and let me touch him with the whip on the belly versus trot off every time because that's just going to expend more energy than he needs to. Which you can tell here he trotted off, but it was shorter distance than he did previously. So he thought about yielding the hindquarters and he's like, nah, I'd rather just trot off. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask him to go forward and draw right there. Yep. So that whole time with that quarter of the round pen there while I was flicking my white whip, I was just saying, can you go forward more so I can draw? I'm not chasing around the round pen. I'm just asking him for that forward to draw toward me. And we go back to our desensitizing. And I'll back up. And I feel like Atlas really needs a lot of approach and retreat. Um, he really has a nice time relaxing when I back off. Like you can tell the difference. As soon as I back up, he's like, oh, okay. And then he'll look at you. So he needs that like mental break more than like my other Mustang does um, and definitely more than the domestics do because um, they're so used to people, um, but it's very interesting for him. Let him sniff it and stuff. He's He's um, been rewarded for touching it in the past and targeting it. So that seems to be a little bit of um, just like a helpful thing for him. If he gets really worried, um, I just let him touch it instead. And that's the same for if I'm asking him to move with the whip and he's really worried and he bends his neck over there and I'll let him touch it instead. So I'm like, I'm not going to force you to move if you're terrified. You can touch the whip. It's not a big deal. Just trying to build his confidence. But I like that he's facing up. He definitely has improved with that since the last session. So I'm just going to let him sit here for a minute. speed up this part too because I'm just letting him sit and we're gonna work on yielding the shoulders so I'm just gonna use this white whip here and just gonna have it up and horizontal and just ask for a little bit of shoulder movement so there he he moved back instead of sideways that's okay he was I'm isolating that shoulder there he thought about it too there we go and I'll let go so I'm not too worried about the first couple steps if he goes back that's okay because I'm just wanting that shoulder to move. So now that he knows that the shoulder is what I want, then I'm gonna specify the direction. I'm not gonna do that for long. I'm gonna do that for a couple tries and then be like, okay, I need the shoulder over and not backward. But in the, in the first couple times, I'm just trying to tell him, see there, he, he moved his shoulders, but I didn't really want that much movement. Um, but I'm just trying to tell him I want the shoulders over and then I'll show him that I want him over this direction. So I'm just breaking it down for him. And he got a little worried with the shoulders um, because it's, again, another movement thing and something he hasn't really done a lot of. So there, that was good. He had made a nice shoulder movement and really stretched out his uh, left front leg there. And like he was going to leave, but then he didn't. So that was really nice. So just to sensitize him here, that was pretty cool. He thought about it and then he didn't. So that's, that's a big deal for him because you can see how many times he left today, which is not a big deal, but I just want to like really point out when he doesn't and reward him for that. Just do some desensitizing and then I think we'll end him on that because that was really nice. That was a really good decision on his part. So I'm just going to desensitize him, go back in, make friends, just pet on him a little bit and end him on that note because that was pretty cool for him. I don't want to do a ton. I, I usually max out in an hour with these sessions with them because um, I just don't want to put too much pressure on them.